blessed new moon to everyone as we approach the second month of the year, <clears throat> the second month of Zip or Aya. Coming after 30 days of the month of Nisan or Abib. Blessed are they that keep the appointed hours of the Lord, because surely God is pleased with that. May I welcome you all in the comfort of your homes and say blessed new moon to you all. As we are going to start this study where we said, how do leaders and laity respond to the Gospel Commission? That's my topic today. We want to see how each will respond. And it's a history from kind and able until today, how laity and leaders respond when God speaks. So we're going to cover all the types, what happened before, and also match it with what will happen in our time. So, because we have a gospel commission for everyone, whether it's for laity or for leaders, everyone, God is no respecter of person. God wants everyone to hear the gospel commission. In the time of Noah, Noah had a commission for everyone. In the time of Christ, when he came for the first time, he had a commission for everyone. In the time of the disciples, Paul, Martin Luther, John Knox, named them all as Sister White. It was a gospel for everyone to respond. There is no sector or any, port, any authority that God does not want to hear the gospel commission. So he's no respecter for anyone. That's why even his own people, when they rejected him, he just left him, left them and went to the Gentiles. So God is for everyone, be it lady, be it leaders. And we have that commission. Today, when we are about to enter the pearly gates, we have it. We have a serious commission. This is the darkest hour of the night. When we all should be paying attention to the gospel commission of God. What does he want us to do to prepare? So today we're going to start. Before we can start, let's start with a quote from Testimonies to Ministers, page 106.4. Right, let's read from that quote. Yeah. But beware, but beware of rejecting that which is truth. Of rejecting. In the last hour now, beware of rejecting that which is truth. Mm -hmm. The great danger with right. our people. There is a danger of Sister White's people. Who is our people? Sister White is the one writing the testimonies to ministers, page 106. She says she saw that danger in our people, in her people. Right? The great danger with our people. What is this danger? The great danger with right. our people right. has been mm -hmm. that of depending upon men and making flesh their this arm. This is what is in Sister White's people. The danger, there is one serious danger that will make them miss the mark. is of depending upon people and making flesh their arm. Instead of leaning upon Christ, they lean upon flesh. They lean upon people. Instead of leaning upon Christ, they lean upon people. That's the greatest danger which will make you and I miss the mark. Now, let's hear more. Mm -hmm. Those right? who have not been in the habit of searching the Bible for themselves. Who does that? Who leans upon people? There are people who, have, who are not in a habit to read for themselves, to search scriptures for themselves to see whether it is it contained in the Bible and spirit of office. But what do they do through their laziness? They lean upon people and they don't even check to see whether these people are upright with God. Now, let's hear. <laughs> Those who have Those. not been in the habit of searching the Bible for themselves right. or weighing evidence mm -hmm. have confidence in the leading men and do accept the decision. Do you see why they have confidence in their leaders, in the leading men? Because they are not in the habit to search for themselves or weighing evidence whether this is right or wrong, so they lean upon any person who leads them. They don't even check whether this person is, is saying it, that say the Lord or not. They lean upon 
the arms of those who lead. But this is not the commission from God. God wants us to search for ourselves. God wants us to check where, where, whether it is wrong coming from a minister. I shouldn't just take it. You shouldn't just take it. Check in the Bible. Is it there? If the people say, thou shalt, if the minister says, thou shalt commit adultery, would you lean upon them? Would you, if he said, thou shalt break the Sabbath, would, would you lean upon them? So the greatest danger is when you see them saying anything, you don't check. You don't check. Being leaders doesn't mean that they automatically should just check you any way they like. You should be checking. Now, let's hear. Uh -huh. Those, uh, <clears throat> mm -hmm. those right. who, have been in, who have not been in the habit of searching the Bible for themselves right. or weighing evidence mm -hmm. have confidence in the leading men and accept the decisions they make. Do you see? They accept decisions. They don't check whether this decision is right or not. They are not in the habit to check. They don't care. They are careless with their spiritual life. Now let's hear. Uh -huh. And thus, and thus, many will reject the messages this God is sends why to His many people. Many will reject the messages coming from God. Why? Because they lean. You know, in the time of Christ, this is what they did. Christ walked with only twelve people. Why? What has happened? Was he not a good preacher? He was. Did he not have a message? Was he not the greatest prophet on earth? He was. But what happened? Why was he followed by 12? When the whole church was against him. Why? Because people were leaning upon the, the arm of flesh. When God said anything, they asked, is it right? Is it right? They didn't even say, is it in the Bible? They asked, is it right? And then what did the minister say? It is, uh, it's not in our bodies. It's not ours. It's not ours. What is this ours? What ours is what? Ours should be the Bible and the spiritual prophecy. This is what is called ours. If you say ours, meaning a, 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 an organization or what, what are you doing? Any organization should be organized according to the doctrines in the Bible. That's why we hold it. When you hold the Bible, the reason why you're holding the Bible is you want to follow. You want to follow Christ. But what is this ours? Ours is not our... Oh, who is this one who wrote the ours? Who is this one who wrote the policies which are against the Bible? Who is this one? The great danger with our people is leaning upon flesh, making flesh their arms. Now, this year. <laughs> mm -hmm. And thus, thus, many will reject the messages. Many will, because God is now clever. God knows anything coming from these people, you will take it. So you will devise a way of testing people, sending messages with people who they don't expect, so that they see whether people are weighing from the Bible. Because you can't be so foolish to take people who just say yes, because somebody said yes. They, God will take people who say yes because they've weighed evidence in the Bible. Now what does he say, right? Mm -hmm. And thus, right. many will reject the very messages God sends to his people right. if these leading brethren do not accept them. So if the leading brethren say no, they all say no. This is what happened. This is what happened with Christ. Many believed in Christ. But they were scared of flesh. They were making flesh their arm. They were scared. Now, let's go to, 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 to our topic today. We are going to find it from Desire of Ages of all. Oh, let's start with Acts of the Apostles to see what the, dis the disciples also had problems. What problems did they have? Let's hear. They had problems. We'll see the problems. What problems Christ had, what his disciples also had. Now, let's go to Acts of the Apostles, page 78.1. The priests mm -hmm. and the rulers saw that Christ was extolled above them. Right. Now, you know, why, why they tell you there is no prophet? Why? Because they think there is no more message to come. But God will not go according to what they think. In each period, there is a prophet. Now, in the period of Christ, he was the main prophet. And the priests were arguing that he wasn't the son of God. He was. Why, why was that argument like that? The argument was because if they proved he was, they were going to take up his message. 
So because what they rejected was his message. So because of that, they renounced that he was not a prophet. He was not sent by God. That was the argument. Why? Because if he was, they would automatically have to recant with all the, their church policies and go about with what Christ had come to teach them. Now here he says, the, the priests and rulers... <laughs> The priests and rulers right? saw that Christ was extolled above them. Right. This is what they realized from the word go. They realized that this one. Now when God sends somebody, they will realize there's somebody extolled above them. This is what they realized first. Now let's hear. <laughs> As the Sadducees, right. who did not believe in the resurrection. You know, there was a sect called Sadducees. They did not believe in the resurrection. But what was Christ saying? Christ was saying there is a resurrection. So if they believed the Christ, automatically they were supposed to recant their doctrines. This is what, this is the problem, this is the argument. If we are preaching that they are feasts, the priest or the leaders will debate and say so. It means we have now to change all the things that we write, wrote in our policies. This is what they say. Now, exactly what it was with Christ. They believed that they saw the message. It was true. He was well extolled above them. But now it was with the message of the resurrection. The Sadducees, they debated. They said, now if we have to take what this person is preaching, then it means we have to change the whole system of what we have been teaching. This is where the problem lies. Did you hear that? Now, in each period, when God sends a message, it does not send the message which people had been practicing. He sends a message contrary to what they have been practicing. And actually, something that they have already nullified and said is wrong. This is what God does. When he sends somebody, he sends somebody with a message which they had already put their stamp to say no to that message. This is what happened with Christ and the disciples. They were believing, they were preaching a message that there is a resurrection. There is a resurrection. But the Sadducees believed strongly that there is no resurrection. When you die, it's enough. This is what, this is the message. Let's hear, let's hear this message. How was it treated by the leaders and the laity? This is our, 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 our message for today, right? Mm -hmm. As the Sadducees, mm -hmm who did not believe in a resurrection, right. heard the apostles declaring that Christ had risen from the dead. You see? They were now enraged. Now the apostles now, when after being filled with the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, they now preached with the holy zeal that Christ is the one who was resurrected. Now look at the sight of the Sadducees. Now these people are preaching powerfully against what we believed. Did you hear that? The feasts are, are things that we rejected in 1888. Now God resurrects people, empowers them to preach the very message which was rejected. Let me tell you one thing. Whether you reject, it's still going to come. That's why God says, even if you refuse, you raise stones. Now in the last days, he raises stones to preach the very message that they stamp that is wrong. This is what happened to the Sadducees. They saw these disciples now because they, they were denying. Christ was thinking that he was going to be buried and resurrected. But they were preaching that there is nothing. He is now telling rubbish. This is not, it's contrary to our, 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 our it's contrary to what we believe, right? What do you believe? You believe the, 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 Lord's Supper is oftenly, oftenly meaning that four times a year. That's what you mean. That, that's often. That's what we will see whether what often was meant by often. Because you can say celebrate your birthday oftenly. Oftenly. It means then people say we are crazy. What are you doing four times? You're celebrating a birthday. Or even the date of death. Are you celebrating that date of death four times? Now here, this is what was the norm. But when God now exposes that it's only 14th day he even, it's contrary to what people demanded, contrary to what people wrote down as a policy. 
It's contrary. Let me tell you one thing. God will surprise us with messages. That will be, you know, it says so in TM, 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 Testimonies to Ministers, page 70. It says even Adventists, they, they not, right? Yeah, even Adventists. 7.1. Yeah. Okay. Even Adventists, yes. Even Seventh-day Adventists mm -hmm. are in danger of closing their eyes to the truth as Everyone it... Everyone is involved, whether those who think we are the highest calling. It says even, this is the quote, they are in danger of something. What is in danger of what? Of what? Of what? In of... danger of closing their eyes to the truth as it is in Jesus. Right. This is as it was in Jesus. Even them also are in danger. So we are not comfortable. We are not to be comfortable, brethren, and say, all we have is now the truth. We are now waiting for the pain. We are in danger. Now, this, they don't... <laughs> because it contradicts something which they have taken for granted as truth, but which the Holy Spirit teaches is not truth. Right. What danger is it? Because there is something coming which is new, which contradicts what we believed. And what we have taken as truth. But the Holy Spirit says it's not truth. Now this don't help. Let's all be very modest. Let's and seek, all be very modest. And, and seek more earnestly to put self out of question. And put self out of the question. And this exalt is Jesus. From Sister White Testament to Minister page 70. Let all be modest and put self out. When a message comes. And what? In most of the religious controversies, In most the foundation controversies. Yeah. the foundation of the trouble yeah. is that self is striving for the supremacy. There is self when a message is preached. That you say, ah, this is what not what we believed. Not, that's self. Take what you believed and put in the bin and take what God is instructing you and take the cross. Whether people like it or not, you are in danger if you say, now what you are saying is not ours. Uh, we are Sabbath keepers, we don't, we don't. You are supposed to go back to the Bible and the spirit of prophets. Now, yeah. Mm -hmm. In most of the religious controversies, right? the foundation of the trouble is that self is striving for the supremacy. Right. About what? Right. About, About what? matters which are not which are not vital points at right, all, right. and which are regarded as such only because men have given importance to them. People have given importance to things that are not biblical, that are not even vital, important at all. And when the gospel comes in clear lines, in clear cut, you have something to say, no, it's not what we practice. This is nothing to do with us. Who are these us? Who are the us? The us should be with the Bible and the spirit of office. We are in danger, brethren. We are in danger. If we take things for granted and say, this is what we believe, we want to listen because this is not what we believe. Now, let's go back to, let's go back to, 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 if you are, you are going to enjoy the, the next paragraph there, you enjoy, why, why? Now, go to the testament to minister the next paragraph, yeah? But let us follow the history of the men whom the Jewish priests and rulers thought so dangerous because they were bringing in new and strange teaching right. on almost every theological subject. When they preached, the disciples, everything was contradicting the theological subjects. Everything was against what they were practicing, what the, the church was, was practicing. When the disciples brought the news, or the gospel of the hour, of their hour. It was against all what the theologians had said. Now, let's read one. Uh -huh. The command right. given by the Holy Spirit, right. go, stand and speak in the temple of the people, right. all the words of this life. Right. So the tide is everyone, what everyone believes. You go to the sea, you find the water flowing like this, but what is happening to the fish? They are against the the current tide. This is what the gospel does. It comes against what you believe. 
Did you understand? Against what you believe is what the gospel should be. If you think the gospel is coming to lull you with what you believe, you will be very disappointed in the last hour. Now, let's, let's see. The only perfection, the only safety you have in the last hour is a that say the Lord. Is it written in the Bible? Is it in the Spirit of God? That's the only safety. If you think the safety is to lean against the, the arm and say, oh, that's why we pay our tithe. That's why this one is being paid to teach us. No, you, will be, you will be surprised in the last hour. The scripture is your safeguard. Right? Let's go back to, to the Sadducees. You see, for long, they were believing there was no resurrection. For long. Now, let, here, let's hear. The Sadducees. AA 78.1. Yeah. Okay. As the Sadducees, mm -hmm. who did not believe in a resurrection, mm -hmm. heard the apostles declaring that mm -hmm. Christ has risen, right. had risen from the dead. How do you think they felt? When they sealed all their books and all their testimonies that there is no resurrection. Now these useless disciples in front of their eyes were useless. They come to say our Christ is resurrected. Against their policy. Did you hear that? Now let's hear. Mm -hmm. As the Sadducees, mm -hmm. who did not believe in a resurrection, right. heard the apostles declaring that Christ had risen from the dead, right. they were enraged. You see what happened? Instead of coming, I said, the response, what is the response of these leaders? What is their response to the message? The disciples are preaching Christ is resurrected. And they believe there is no resurrection. What was their response? You know, people have already said that there are no feasts from 1888. They rejected the message. 1888. Gospel from Galatians. 3 verse 24, which is the schoolmaster bought, Sister White said, endorsed and then bought the moral and ceremonial are the code of conduct to be followed. They rejected it. And so it means all this time they lulled everyone and said, they no more, no more feast, no more. They even bring examples of Sister White not keeping the feast. They, they, give me, they, they, they think they're going to lull you. You know what? That's the danger of not following the utterances of the gospel. Because the very sister I did uttered sometime and said, people can eat, I can bring you the quotation, can eat uh, uh, pork. Yes, she endorsed it. She endorsed it and later on came and said, no more, not even a single vegetable, uh, uh, something which is non-vegetarian should be eaten. You see, the, you have to go with what she was uttering. She came sometimes and said, six o'clock is when the Sabbath begins. And it was a conference where everyone was, was to follow. Some people were saying, no, it's sunset. But she said, 6 o'clock. And everyone followed for 6 o'clock. And then she came to the next conference and said, now it's sunset. So you have to follow her utterances. Don't take what she uttered. She uttered a lot of things before 1888. After 1888, she uttered. She uttered that no one should call the church Babylon before they rejected in 1888. After 1888 in GC, Great Controversy, page 606, she utters that people will be amazed to find that the church is Babylon. Now you have to follow the utterances. If you don't follow, you follow. You know, there's someone, Paul, he used to preach that we don't all skip. We will be changed. Mm. That was the utterance in his time. But here he is, he is in the grave. So what did he mean? He, he, he preached at an utterance in his time, which God allowed him to preach for that time. But if you are to check, he is in the grave. So the utterances is a danger. If you, if you take the utterances which are uttered before an event, which tells you that now this is the situation in front of God, you will be trailing behind. Already, we have seen there are five angels' messages here. And you can see when you are still on the third, some are already on the ninth. Already you are behind. If I need to get a correct quotation which will give me security, I'll take it from the fifth angel. I won't take it from the third or from William Miller. William Miller was keeping Sunday. 
That's why he was called First Day Adventist. That's why William Miller actually rejected the Sabbath message. He rejected the Sabbath message. But God winked and led him to rest and charged that to the brethren who were around him, who caused him, you can read the history, who caused him to reject. But if you want to prove a point, you can't take William Miller's, the first angel's message. You'll be so daft, daft, to take the first angel's message to prove what is happening now. The only thing to prove is to the last utterance what God said uttered at last. This is your security. I can see people dodging, dodging, and ignoring to be sealed, the, the seal of Jerusalem, which is for keeping the feast, using the utterances which were done before. This is what is happening. Now, God is saying, the elect, the very elect, will never be, be deceived. The devil might deceive those who are not elect. No one bothers about that. But the very elect will have utterances in accordance to the time. And this time, this is what changed. That time, this is what was at. That time, this is what. Now, this will protect us in the time of the end. Those who don't have a habit of searching scriptures for themselves, they will only say, oh, because it needs commitment. Here we are. It's a Tuesday. It's a Sabbath. What is the general consensus? It's a day of work, isn't it? Men are busy going to find this, the money, isn't it? But what is God saying? God is saying today is a Sabbath. It's a new moon. And where are they, those who are uttering all this? He, see, Sister White never mentioned that. William Miller never mentioned. Let alone look, Martin Luther never mentioned that. But what is the utterance at last? It's a new moon and you check in the Bible. It's there. And you check even in the new heaven and new earth in Isaiah chapter 66, verse 22 up to 24. It's there. So you have got to be very careful whether you are in the last utterance of Sister White. You have to be careful to check when the fourth angel comes can utter something that was not being practiced before. Like it was with Sister White. She changed the day to Sabbath. Which, when William Miller, her own teacher, was not keeping. William Miller did not keep the Sabbath. was a first day Adventist. This is where it started. And he actually rejected Sister White's message. That's why he's not there in the special resurrection. Where it says, graves were opened in Great Controversy, page 637. And all who died in the faith of the third angel's message will be resurrected. So William Miller is down. Is not going to be resurrected at that utterance. No, so let's 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 hear and enjoy the study. While people the, the devil won't stand idle, will be coming also with the, uh, you, you know what? <laughs> I was told here by that the, when the disciples preached, they were against theology. They were against all what the theological subject. Now let's hear. Go to his of ages, page one oh one. And here, what, this is the reason why even Christ himself was not sent to the rabbinical schools to learn theology. Now, here, here, here it is. You know? In childhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. In childhood and mm -hmm. in youth, mm -hmm. the character is most impressible. No, I want to point. In the natural order. Right, in the natural order. Okay. Mm -hmm. Point three. Mm -hmm. In the natural order of things, right. the son of Zacharias, would have been educated for the priesthood. Right. But the training of the rabbinical schools mm -hmm. would have unfitted him for his work. Did you hear that? There is a training that God said Christ cannot go. The institute of that day was the rabbinical school. And deserve ages tell, tells you that the training, this is why the, the disciples were, were looked down upon. They had no theology. The training of such... Education was going to unfit even John the Baptist. Now read on. Mm -hmm. God did not send God did not send him to the teachers of theology right. to learn how to interpret the scriptures. Mm -hmm. He called him to the desert right. that he might learn of nature and nature's God. Right. So where did he go to learn how to prepare the way of the Lord? The desert. In the desert. You will find the whole chapter when you read why it was important for him to go to the desert. 
and to avoid the, the training. Why? Let's read on. Uh -huh. It was a lonely religion. No, no, no. Let's read. Why was he avoiding CSW 38.1? What's the reason behind? Why was he avoiding going through the rabbinical schools? Uh -huh. 38.1. 38.1, right? Okay. Many a portion of scripture. No, I, I want to wait, point one. Point one. Yeah, one reason why. Uh -huh. One reason why mm -hmm. many theologians, theologians have no clearer understanding of God's word is they close their eyes to truths which they do not wish to practice. Why do why does God avoid us going to these schools like he did with John the Baptist? He says they close their eyes to truths which they do not wish to practice. Did you hear that? They close, they say, do I want to practice the feast? No. And then they close their eyes so that they don't practice. So that they don't teach that one because they do not want to practice it themselves. Now let's hear, uh -huh. right? An understanding of mm -hmm. Bible truth depends not so much on the power of intellect right? brought to the search as the singleness of purpose, right? the earnest longing after righteousness. Right. So here it says, an understanding of Bible truth depends not so much on, on the, the power, power of, of intellect. intellect. Now, people think uh, for you to, 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 to expose the truth of God, you should have these trainings and have intellect, the highest intellect. It doesn't depend on that. What does it depend on? It, it says, highest power of intellect brought to the search as a singleness of purpose. The earnest longing after righteousness is what gives you the truth. Now, God weighs the heart and see, do you earnestly want to be changed or to be righteous? Then he gives you the truth. You don't need to, to go on those training. That's, what, that's why he avoided. He made sure John was not sent there because John had an honest longing to be saved. So God, to God, that was enough qualification. The qualif Did you hear the qualification? It's your earnestness to know, to want to be righteous. And this is what God checks in the heart. Not the intellect. Or how much IQ you have. But the heart, does the heart want to earnestly become righteous? And then God, John was picked. Now let's hear, let's, let's hear more. Let's hear more. Want to hear more. Uh, uh, go to MH above the 442.3. Because it's a subject we have to understand. Why did God make sure these disciples avoid going to these rabbinical schools? Why? <laughs> And to and a great degree, to a great theology right? as studied and taught right? is but a record of human speculation. What is theology? What is it? Sister White identifies it and say, to a great degree, what is it? It it's is a record. A, a record. It is a study. Now, let's, let me read it properly. To a great degree, theology as studied and taught is but a record of human speculation. Now, when you want something exposed through a, a scripture as it was with Christ, Christ with us and, and lead you to Jeremiah and lead you to Isaiah. It says they, they lead you to human speculation. Ah, oh, no, 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 that one, it won't be nice. Hey, it's satanic. It's what is not what we practice. We want a verse which shows what we should practice. We want a scripture. It, it says it's a record of human speculations. Now, let's hear more. Let's hear more. Uh -huh. Serving. S <clears throat> Serving only to darken counsel by words without knowledge. Did you hear? What they do is they will just give you a big word. And you, because you are ignorant of that word, then they, you think, oh, they know it. They know everything. Statologically, exegetically, as well. Have you ever met them even in your school? You have never. And then you say, oh, 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 these are the know-it-all. Now, here, yeah, this is what Sister White is saying. 
He's saying too often. Listen, let's hear too often. Mm -hmm. Too often. Right? The motive in accumulating these many books mm -hmm. is not so much a desire to obtain food for mind and soul right? as it is an mm -hmm. ambition to become acquainted with philosophers and theologians, a desire to present Christianity to the people in learned terms and propositions. It's a desire. Mm -hmm. It's a desire to present Christianity to the people mm -hmm. in learned terms, in, in propositions. So like when you go to court, you have got to be represented by a lawyer because you do not know the learned terms there. So they want to present also Christianity in learned terms so that you, you, you stand and say, ah, I'm ignorant, let those who are learned interpret the Bible. And here it's saying, too often, the motive in accumulating these many books, there are many theological books, is not so much a desire to, open f to obtain food. You understand, when you go to read a text, are you in desire to learn that text? So it says the motive is not to learn the text. The motive is not to have food from the text, but what is it? To, are, the desire is not to obtain food for mind and soul, as it is an ambition to become acquainted. Did you hear? Acquainted with philosophers and theology. So he wants to answer in a way that when they see me, they just class me together with the philosophers and the theologians. So when I walk, I walk tall because I have explained in the terms accepted by philosophers or theologians. This is what is, Sister White is talking about. That's what God says in Desire of Ages, page 101. In the natural order, God did not send them to the teachers of theology to interpret, to learn how to interpret scriptures. The scriptures here, yeah, they don't need interpretation. They are simple. When he says, I will send Elijah the prophet to keep this, to, to teach the, the statutes and judgments. And the statutes you check, you find they are the feasts. It's clear. The word is so simple and clear. But God is saying they learn these, dark, these big words to darken the evidence to his truth. Did you hear? Now, this is written in black and white. It's there. If it was not supposed to be read, it should be taken off. But it's, as long as it's there, we will read it. Now, let's go back. Uh, I went also about the SPM 52.2. You understand? In his teaching, listen. In his in, teaching. In his teaching. Uh -huh, it's our, Christ's teaching now. Listen. Mm -hmm. In his teaching, right? our Savior mm. did not encourage any to attend the rabbinical schools. His teaching. He did not encourage anybody to attend them. Why? We have seen the reason why. What is happening there? The terms of darkening the truth, we have seen them. In his teaching, our Savior did not encourage any to attend the rabbinical schools. Let's hear. Mm -hmm. In his teaching, mm -hmm. our Savior did not encourage any to attend the rabbinical schools of his day. Right. For the reason that their minds would be corrupted with the continually repeated they, they say, say so. or it has it been is, said. It has to, instead of giving a text, they say, they say in it such a, they, they, it has been, it, why not give a text? It is written in the Bible, in the spiritual prophets. Now let's hear. Uh -huh. The Lord can do more with mm -hmm. minds that have no connection with the schools where infidel authors are perused. Right. These lesson, mm -hmm. these lesson books he reaches out his hand to remove. So when he comes, he says, which, which are these books? He takes them off. <laughs> Why? Because he does not want us to be associated with them, with these books. And what? <laughs> these lesson books, right? he reaches out his hand to remove. Right? And in their stead, places the Old and, and New, New Testament, Testament scriptures. Right? He said, we don't need these books. We don't need them. What do we put? We, he puts the Old and New, and New Testament. Testament. That's it. And the spirit of prophets, which we all understand was a prophet. Sister White was a prophet. There we clap hands. Then we use Sister White as a prophet. Her books that we all agree 
was from a prophet, that's where we will just go and say, okay, let's see the prophet. We all agree. Then we put the prophet, what does she say according to that verse? This is what we do. Now, let's hear. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. These, uh, yeah. Yeah. Those mm -hmm. who will search the scriptures for themselves right? because it is the word of God right. who are willing to dig for the truth right? as for hidden treasures mm -hmm. will receive for their prize that wisdom which cometh from God. Mm -hmm. If they will not rely upon their own smartness, smartness. Mm -hmm. not trust in their own inventions right? and fruitful minds, right? If they will give, give the working of the mind into the Lord's hands right? and yoke up with Jesus Christ, right? they will not take steps where Jesus does not lead the way. Right. Where God is saying, he said, in his teachings, he never encouraged anyone to attend or to read all those books. He never. Mm. Why? You will darken the truth. All you do is just wait for the truth to be presented. And then you come and darken it. That's it. And say, no, uh, let me tell you, me, I'm a, um, because I've got this, uh, I'm associated with philosophers and theologians, because of that, I have the higher mind, I have the upper, upper decision. And people, that's why people are just resting and uh, accepting their decisions. Do you understand? This is what happened. Now, let's read on. This is an interesting topic, and we should really thank God for, for, for putting all these expositions in the scriptures. Otherwise, we could have no way to find the truth. Right? We, you were reading that first paragraph. We are, we are still on the first paragraph. I don't know. If we don't finish, we'll finish it. Even on Sabbath, we, we can rest on it. We, we need to understand it because it's for us to be saved. We are, be, we are standing between the dead and the living. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you get it wrong, you are dead. You get it right, you live. Right? Uh, let's hear where you are reading? From AA. Mm -hmm. AA. As the Sadducees, mm -hmm. who did not believe in a resurrection, mm -hmm. heard the apostles declaring that Christ had risen from the dead. So now we know what was inspiring the Sadducees and, and, and the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. We know they had gone through these rabbinical schools to learn theology. Did you see? So now we know from the spirit of prophecy, the very spirit which Sister White is writing, the, the book of AA. He has also elaborated to us to know what theology is that she means. I don't know what yours means, but what she means is that. Mm -hmm. Now, let's hear. So these Sadducees, they had from their theology learned that there's no re uh, <laughs> resurrection. Do you understand? Right. Mm -hmm. They were enraged. Right. Realizing that if the apostles were allowed to preach the risen Savior, mm -hmm. And to work miracles in his name, mm -hmm. the doctrine that there would that there would be no resurrection mm -hmm. would be rejected by all. Right. So uh, what are they scared of? Their message. The message that they had endorsed because of their books that are not biblical, that are not the old and new testament. Their books that gave them that there is no resurrection. Because there is no way in the old and, and new testament, it's no way. That doctrine that they had in their policies is no way that there was no resurrection. No way. Where then did they grasp it from? From these rabbinical schools, from the theologians, from these philosophers who were there at that time. They told them that there is no res resurrection. Once you die, it's finished. This is what, what they had been told and believed, the Sadducees. Right. Now, why are they scared of the disciples? The disciples are preaching that Christ has been resurrected. And now this doctrine, which is true, which God is inspiring from these unlearned ones who never went for theology. Now these ones, they are now declaring there is resurrection. So it's going to prove them wrong. You see? Instead of humbling themselves and saying, I think you are right. Let's see where you get it from. Now there is proof. Practically, Christ is risen. They say it won't believe. One believe is risen, right? Instead, they they had rage. Instead, they had rage. They are angry that their doctrine now has been proven as wrong. Do you understand? Now, let's hear. Mm -hmm. On the next paragraph, point two, AA 78. Point. Yeah, I finished. Oh, you haven't finished. Mm -hmm. Finish off. Uh -huh. 
realizing right. that if the apostles were allowed to preach a risen savior mm -hmm. and to work miracles in his name right. the doctrine that there would be no resurrection would be rejected by all right. and the sect of sadducees would soon become extinct now the, once their doctrine is wrong what does it prove to people all these years what have they been pre preaching all these years when they have been preaching a wrong doctrine all these years. Do you understand? Now, here, let's hear. Uh -huh. The Pharisees right? were angry as they perceived that the tendency of the disciples' teaching was to undermine the Jewish ceremonies right? and make the sacrificial offerings of no effect. Right. So because they, they, they believe it's not Christ who died. So they wanted to continue with the sacrificial offerings. So this doctrine of these, that's why Paul was preaching even in Colossians and said, it, the ordinance, lotting the handwriting of ordinances that were against us, the ordinances which are the animal sacrifices that were against us, these have been blotted from the cross. And he, he clearly says in verse 16, Colossians 2 verse 16, the, the new moons, the Sabbath, the holy days are still a shadow of things to come. He did not take them off. But what has been plotted is in verse 14, Colossians 2 verse 14, the animal ordinances have been plotted. That pointed to the body of Christ. Now they wanted to continue with these animal sacrifices. Now they see the disciples preaching that he's gone. He's died and he's, he's been resurrected and he's gone back. To heaven. Now, this doctrine was a red. Now, you, you see where their problem was? Was the cross. They were arguing that the cross had not yet been I, I, I performed. But the disciples were saying the, the cross has performed and the animal sacrifices should stop. Now, the, the argument is always on that cross. Why? Because those who lived and who believed Christ was not the ones, one who died. They still wanted the animal sacrifice to go. And now after the cross, those who believe that Christ is the one who died, they want only the name of Christ, but they do not want the ceremonial system or the, the, the new moons, the Sabbath, which are still a shadow in Paul's day to continue. You see, that's where the devil is always, his eyes is around the cross. Now, let's hear, let's hear more. Hitherto. Mm -hmm. Hitherto, mm -hmm. all the efforts made to suppress this new teaching so had been in they vain. <laughs> they tried efforts now to suppress this teaching. You, you, we can see, we know the efforts that are being tried to suppress the teaching of the feast. We know. And we read them all, and we see what is happening. We know the the feast were nailed by the cross. We no longer look. We do this. We do this. We know all these efforts. We know, and these are the efforts that were done even by the Sadducees. They made efforts now to suppress this new teaching. Why? It will undermine our authority. It will prove us wrong. That all this time, when you know what. Humbly, humbly take up the new teaching and humbly educate the people. And that will all, that will just solve the, the issue. But if you can see the whole system of the, of the, of, of the uh, disciples when they were preaching, Christ was now on their side. So if you, 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 you preach against those who, who are being led by Christ, you are fighting a terrible war. A war which, which, which has never been fought. Which, all these ages is the very war that was bringing persecution to those who are right. From, from Abel and Cain. Cain, did, Cain was producing pumpkins on the altar, which is wrong. While Abel was producing the animal which pointed to Christ. And that argument started from there and is still on in our, in our time. Now, let's hear. Mm -hmm. Hitherto, mm -hmm. all the efforts made to suppress this new teaching had been in vain. Right. But both, 
But now, but now mm -hmm. both Sadducees and mm -hmm. Pharisees determined, determined that the work of the disciples should be stopped. Right. For it was proving them guilty of the death of Christ. Right. So why were they now stopping these disciples? Because now their teaching is proving that they nailed the very Son of God. For if the resurrection is believed, then even the one that they say has been resurrected is the very Son of God. Because there's never in a period when one has been buried for, for, from Friday to Sunday morning and come up alive. That was a miracle. So if they allow these disciples to preach that miracle, then their doctrine is finished. And also they will be guilty of killing the Son of God. This is, this is exactly. So if the feast prove to be correct from the scriptures, then it will prove even A.T. Johnson Wagon was right. Even Victor Watef was right. Now this will prove that people will be guilty for rejecting the 1888 message, which is chronicled in black and white. It was rejected. But God promised it's going to come at, at last. It will, and when it comes, it does the same effect of being hated, of being ridiculed, of being spoken against, of being en, of enraging people, thinking their, 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 their authority is being undermined. Because they have set themselves not to keep uh, the feast. Now, listen, let's hear. Mm -hmm. Read, finish that paragraph. But now, both, Sar but now, mm -hmm. both Sadducees and mm -hmm. Pharisees mm -hmm. determined that the work of the disciples should be stopped. Right. For it was proving them guilty of the death of, Christ, of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Filled with indignation, mm -hmm. the, pr the priest laid violent hands on Peter and John mm -hmm. and put them in the common prison. So they, they made them arrested. They put them in prison. Why? So that they don't prove our, our doctrine is wrong. Only that they made the innocent blood arrested in prison. Peter in prison. Paul in prison. John. Violent hands. Just, I have never met people who, who, who want to to prove that they are with God having such actions. Violent hands on someone because the point is going to undermine our doctrine. Just that. I've never, I've never seen how, how people... Now let's see. In this law of Moses, let's, let's ponder into it and see how wrong really is it or how right is it. Now let's go down, down below the... Um, on the HST is in the New Estate. HST, HST, space October 2, 1844, page 71.2. Read from that quote. The, <clears throat> the law of Moses mm -hmm. contained a shadow of good things to come. Right. A system of figures or types mm -hmm. pointing to Christ and his kingdom. Right. It had two things. The law of Moses had two things. One, it pointed to Christ. And also, what it, did it point? To, to, the to the kingdom. Now, let's go to the estate. Go to Colossians chapter 2. We want to see the law of Moses pointing to two things. Chapter 2, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Bloating out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, mm -hmm. which was contrary to us, mm -hmm. and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Which one is that ordinance? That handwriting of ordinance? Go to Numbers. 19 verse 1 to 3. Okay. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, right. This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord hath commanded, right. saying, What is this ordinance? Uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel right. that they bring thee a red hypha without spot. So the animals are in ordinance, right? Mm -hmm. Now go to 2, Colossians 2, verse 14. It says, This handwriting of animal sacrifice mm -hmm. has been blotted. Now here yeah, we have been told by this quotation, which is very long, it's HST, October 2, 1844, page 71.2. It says, the law of Moses contained a shadow of good things to come, a system okay. of figures or types pointing to Christ. So which type was pointing to Christ there? The body 
of animal ordinances was pointing to, to Christ as for Colossians chapter 2 verse 14. But what about then and his kingdom? So there are two things. The, the, they are pointing to Christ and also pointing to his kingdom. But what is pointing to the kingdom then? Because the, the animal sacrifices are not pointing to the kingdom. How readest thou? Now let's go to verse 16, Colossians 2, verse 16. Let's see what is in there, right? Mm -hmm. Let no man, mm -hmm. therefore, mm -hmm. judge you in meat or meat in drink. Meat is bread, drink mm -hmm. is wine. Go to Exodus, you'll find that. Exodus 20, 29, verse 38, and read on until 40. You'll find that the bread is the meat, the wine is the, is, is the drink. Let no one charge you in meat, which is the bread, in drink, which is the wine. Now, and what, what else? Mm -hmm. Let no man, mm -hmm. therefore, mm -hmm. judge you in meat right. or in drink, right. or in respect of an holy day, right. or the new moon, right. or of the Sabbath days, right. which are a shadow of things to come, right. but the body is of Christ. So the body, on, on verse 14, is the body of Christ. But the new moon, the Sabbath, the bread and wine, the, the holy days, these are still a shadow of things to come. Now here we have been told that these, the law of Moses had, it contained the, the shadow of good things to, to come. Now which are these good things to come? One, the system figures, the type pointing to Christ, which is Colossians 2 verse 14. That's the animal sacrifice pointing to the body of Christ. And then also his kingdom. So these are the two things that the sacrificial law, I mean the ceremonial law was pointing to. It was pointing one, the, the, the ordinance or the animal sacrifice pointing to the body of Christ. And what about the rest? The rest was pointing to the kingdom. Do you understand? That's why Paul is saying, these are shadow of things to come. What are the things to come? The kingdom. The shadow of things to come is the kingdom. Now let's understand this in full. Go to the same host, HST, October 2, 1844, page 71.2. Our Lord. Mm -hmm. Our Lord, mm -hmm. at his first coming, right. when he died on the cross, right. began the fulfillment of those types contained in the law. Right. Now, he's saying, that's why he says in the, in, in the next chapter, Matthew chapter 5, Verse 17, he says, what did he say? Think not. Think not uh -huh. that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. Right. I am come to destroy. I am not come to destroy, but, but to, to fulfill. fulfill. Uh -huh. Now, he says, I have not come to destroy this law of Moses or the prophets. I did not come to, I did not come to destroy. But here we are being told, when he came, he first... Our Lord, in his first coming, when he died on the cross, when he died on the cross, began the fulfillment of those types contained in the law. So he only began, but he did not finish fulfilling them. He only began the fulfillment of those things in the law and the prophets. But he has not finished. Now let's read on here. Our Lord, read it in full. Let's hear. Mm -hmm. okay. Our Lord, mm -hmm. at his first coming, right. when he died on the cross, mm -hmm. began the fulfillment of those types contained in the law. Right. So as the our first great... type he fulfilled was his death. His body, which was representing the animal. He began by that. Right. And what? <laughs> As our great high priest, mm -hmm. he is still fulfilling them. As our great high priest, when he ascended to heaven, he is now our great high priest. What is he still doing? He is still fulfilling the law and the prophets. Did you understand that clearly? Now, if you say everything was nullified by the cross, you are wrong. Because he only started by fulfilling the animal sacrifice. But as he also ascended into the Holy of Holies right now, he is still fulfilling that law and the prophets. 
This is what we are taking from the spirit of prophecy. It says in, in HST October 2, 1844, page 71.2. Read it properly. As he ascended, what did, did you go to do in heaven? To continue fulfilling the law and the prophet as he promised in Matthew chapter 5. I have not come to take it off. But what have I come to do? I have come to fulfill the law and the prophets. Now, the first thing he did on his death fulfilled the antitype of the animal sacrifices. But when he ascended into the holy of holies in heaven, he still continues to fulfill them, the law and the testament, the, the law and the prophets, as he said in Matthew chapter 5. Now, let's read it properly now. You understand? We are reading it and then now analyzing it. Now, let's hear. Mm -hmm. as, he, as, he, as our great high priest. Mm -hmm. As our great high priest, mm -hmm. he is still fulfilling, fulfilling them. them. Right? And when he comes the second time, right? he will complete their fulfillment. When is the fulfillment going to complete? When he says it is finished and comes. So the fulfillment of that ceremonial law or the law of Moses and the prophets completes with him stepping again back. Did you hear? Now, I, I see our brother have already finished. But Christ hasn't. Christ hasn't finished. He will fulfill the law and the prophets. When he comes, he fulfills it in full. He went to fulfill and he's still fulfilling. When he comes, he comes to completely fulfill the law and the prophets. Now, this is clear. So if you say uh, Colossians uh, chapter 2 is nailing everything and leaving everything to the cross and now we are staying a willy-nilly like that, you're wrong. Don't you see? You're wrong. You need to study. You need to study because he is still fulfilling the law and the prophets. And when he goes, that's what Paul says, these, the remaining in verse 16, the meat, the drink, the 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 new moon, the Sabbath, the holidays are still a shadow of things to come. Who is fulfilling those shadows? Our Lord, when he steps in the Holy of Holies, he is still fulfilling. He started by fulfilling on the cross. And we saw that is blotted. That's why verse 14 is there. The, the ordinances, which are the animal sacrifices pointing to his body, that was fulfilled by the cross. But he continues to fulfill the shadows which were there in the law of Moses when he is still in heaven and when he comes back he is still. That's why Great Controversy, page 399 says, study the symbolic service for even the second coming of Christ is there in the law of Moses and the prophets. Now let's hear, let's hear, we, we went to enjoy on the second paragraph, the same, same, um, uh, go to uh, chapter, chapter, um, Page 71.2, not at, at least. Not the least point will fail. Now, let's hear what it is on Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 there, okay. on the second paragraph. Think not right? that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. Mm -hmm. I am come, I am not no, come. That way it says everything contained in the second paragraph, right? Everything mm -hmm. contained in the law was to be fulfilled by him. Everything contained in the law of Moses is going to be fulfilled by him. Right? Uh -huh. In Matthew mm -hmm. 5 verse 17 and right? 18, mm -hmm. Jesus says, mm -hmm. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. Right? I am not come to destroy, right? but to fulfill. Right? For verily I say unto you, mm -hmm. till heaven and earth pass, right? one jot or one title, shall in no wise pass from the law till we till all be fulfilled. Right. Next paragraph. Not, not at least, not, not the, the least point. Not <laughs> the least point will, will fail. fail. Right. Either mm -hmm. in the substance shadowed forth or in the time so definitely pointed out for the observance of the types. Not mm. a single dot, not a single shadow, which was in the law of Moses, will fail to be fulfilled. He is still fulfilling it. In heaven, he is still going to fulfill it when he steps back. He is still on the law of Moses and the prophets. And the, Moses was the first prophet anyway. 
the law of Moses and the prophet is still, and not even either the time, not the least point will fail of that of that of that law of the ceremonial system. Not a single point will fail, either in the substance shadowed forth or in the time so definitely pointed out for the observance of the types. For God is an exact keeper. Now, that's the end of that paragraph. It says, God is an exact time keep, keeper. Time keeper. Did you hear? That's why when you see in Great Controversy, page 399, it says, it was not only fulfilled as the event, but as the time. That's why we ask you, what time are you taking the Lord's Supper? What time are you taking this? And we see, we have strange answers that are very foreign to the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. The time is important. It's not all, it's going to be fulfilled exactly on time, as to be to the time. Now, uh, go to STI. STI is in the New Estate, uh, point three. Why did, yeah. Mm -hmm. Why did Christ uh -huh. ordain bread to be used in the in Lord's, Lord's Supper, Supper and Why? not the Lamb? Why did he, not, it was easy for him to tell us, okay, you can read the, the lamps. It also points to the body of Christ. But why did he give us bread instead? Bread and wine. Why? Now, let's hear. Why did he take the symbol of bread? Now, let's hear in point three there. Because. Because the types and <laughs> shadows were to cease when the real sacrifice was come. Right. There was to be no... There was to be no more shedding of blood mm -hmm. when once his all prevailing blood was shed. So that's the only time which was stopped yeah. the killing. But why then give us bread? That's what we want to, to hear. Um, let's let's go to the uh, to the next paragraph. The, then. Uh, then the lamb. <laughs> then the lamb mm -hmm. being sacrificed once for all. Right. What it needed is to teach the world that Christ is now the bread of life. Mm -hmm. Perhaps mm. also mm. it was because bread was more easily provided right. and fitted thus more easily to the part of the universal ordinance. Now, it's a universal ordinance. Mm. That's one thing. God knew that when he mentions bread, you go every country there is bread. Every country, even the remotest, they talk of bread. They will find bread. The only universal substance found in every country. You go anywhere in South Africa, you find bread. You go to Australia, you find bread. You go to America, you find bread. You go to UK, you find bread. You go to Israel, you find bread. You go to Africa, everywhere, you find bread. It's a universal item. So God used bread. Did you understand? If you use something different, someone will just make an excuse and say, oh, this is not available in our country. The only thing which is available in all countries which he used for his body is bread. Right? Now, let's hear. This is from STI.3. Let's hear from the next paragraph, STI.3, again, the subsequent. I want to hear. Um, want to now know more about this uh, Passover, start, start with First Corinthians down there, chapter 11, verse 23. Let's understand where maybe peradventure some of our brethren are taking the, the idea of often, often, you often, you often. You know, Paul was the teacher of the Gentiles. And uh, we'll see in First Corinthians chapter 11, uh, verse 23, start from there. Let's hear about this bread. How then is this bread taken? Yeah, you understand? Uh -huh. For I have received uh -huh. of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, uh -huh. that the Lord Jesus, that same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Right. We are starting with the Lord's Supper. Uh -huh. The night he was betrayed, he had taken bread. Yeah, was it? He took bread the night he was betrayed. Paul is now talking about the bread. Well, how do we use the bread? Uh, some people are confused. There is where we use the bread every day. Like it was with the, with the, with the uh, in Old Testament. They were killing the lamb at that hour or in the morning sacrifice and also killing the lamb in the evening sacrifice. Well, probably let's go to that verse. Let's go to that Exodus chapter 29. 
verse 38. You see, they were commanded to take this bread in the morning and eve, in the evening. The priest was, was doing that. Let's hear. Mm -hmm. Verse 38. Right? Or 29 verse 38. Mm -hmm. Now, mm. this is that which thou shalt offer mm. upon the altar. Right? Two lamps of the first year, day by day, continually. So in the Old Testament, they were, they were killing the lamb, two, one in the morning, one in the evening. Why? The one lamp mm -hmm. thou shalt offer in the morning, and right. the other lamp thou shalt offer at even. Right. And with the one lamp, a mm -hmm. tenth deal of flour mingled with the fourth part of a hen of beaten oil, mm -hmm. and the fourth part of a hen of wine right. for a drink offering. Right. And the other lamp, Thou shalt offer at even, and shalt do thereto according to the meat offering of the morning, right. and according to the drink offering thereof, right. for a sweet savor, an offering made by fire unto the Lord. So these are the types. The priest was doing that in the morning. On top of killing the lamb, he was taking the flour mingled with oil, which is bread, and the yin of wine, which is wine. So he took the bread and wine, also killed the lamb. But when Christ died, the lamb, the killing of the lamb ceased. But what remained? The bread and wine continued on those two times. Did you understand? That's what we call the daily. Mm. Now, we, we, we talk about the daily. It's done every day. So, sometimes some people confuse Sister White when he's talking about the daily because the light was still being unrolled. That's why she said in another text, as for the daily, silence is golden. So, to make mm. sure that she had not been given the full uh, reformation of the daily as it was eradicated by the little one of uh, Daniel chapter 8, verse 10. The rain, the, the horn took off the daily first. But we see if the daily was taken off, was only substituted to wrong time in the morning, wrong time in the evening. But we have to reform and put it back in its right time. So this is the bread and wine which remained after the animals were, had been taken off. Um, they were using bread. Did you see they were using bread in the morning and in the evening? Every day continually. Is it what, what happened? Yes. This is that verse which says every day continually. Mm -hmm. This shall be a continual burnt offering right? throughout your generation right? at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before mm -hmm. the Lord. So this was done. Why was it done? Let's go to, go to the east and go to PP. P.P. Patrick and Prophet, page 355, first paragraph. Why was that being done, right? Mm -hmm. Such right. was the work that went on day by day throughout the year. That work went on day by day throughout the year. Uh -huh. The sins of Israel right? being, being thus transferred to the sanctuary, mm -hmm. the holy places were defiled, mm -hmm. and a special work became necessary for the removal of the sins. So the sins, the priest did those two performances every day in case all the sins that have been brought, that anyone in Israel has sinned, whether there was anyone who sinned or not, the priest performed for the whole nation so that they, they will be sanctified. Those were the, the things done every day, right? And what? Mm -hmm. The sins of Israel being mm -hmm. thus transferred to the sanctuary, mm -hmm. the holy places were defiled and a special work beca became necessary mm -hmm. for the removal of sins. Right. God commanded that an atonement be made for each of the sacred apartments as for the altar to cleanse it and hallow it from the uncleanliness of the children of Israel. So this is what sanctified the whole nation. The priest performed the daily, every day. And that's why we find even some churches are still taking Holy Communion in the morning and Holy Communion in the It came from that. Do you understand? And we can't find it anywhere in the house of God. It's gone, it's gone completely. But it's there. That's why it was taken off in the dark ages by the little horn on Daniel chapter 8 verse 10. He took off the daily. Right? He also did not only take the religious laws only, the Ten Commandments, but the other religious law was the daily. It was taken now, maybe, let's read the verse, Daniel chapter 8. And we believe in seeing the verse. This was done. Now, when we are hearing brethren talking about often, often, coming from Sister White, often, often, 
Then you, we want to start where it was uttered by Paul, right? Uh -huh. 8 verse 10. Daniel. 8 verse 10. Mm -hmm. And it works great, mm -hmm. even to the host of heaven. Right, you see in the dark ages, the little one now, in Daniel chapter 7 is called the beast, but in Daniel chapter 8 is called the little, little one. one. It's still in the dark ages. Words get to the host of heaven. The host of heaven are the Christians, right? Uh -huh. And it cast down some of the host of the stars of, to the ground right. and it stamped killed, upon them. It killed those who were reforming. Those are the stars which were cast down to the ground. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. He magnified himself even to the prince of the host. Right. And by him, the daily sacrifice was taken away. When he magnified himself to the prince of hosts, the prince is Christ now. is the leader of the Christians. By him, the daily was taken. Mm -hmm. So this is the, 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 the performance which was being done in the Old Testament, which was instituted by God to make people clean as a nation, and it continued. We want to see whether this continued in the Christian era. Let's go to uh, uh, Acts chapter, chapter 2 first. Right? Acts chapter 2. Two, eh? Yeah. Pentecost. Right. When the day of Pentecost <clears throat> was fully come. So it came 50 days from Passover. That's the feast we are, we are waiting for, the, the day of Pentecost. So that day of Pentecost came after Passover. Yeah. After Christ had long gone back to heaven. So the disciples were wait, waiting for Christ on the day of Pentecost, which is 50 days from Passover. Now what happened when the, when the Spirit had come? What happened? Uh, go to verse 12. Verse 12. Because they were heard now speaking in tongues and people think these are mad. They were people, some people have seen, <laughs> have seen them taking wine. Now let's hear verse 12. Uh -huh. And they were all amazed mm -hmm. and were in doubt, right? saying mm. one to another, what meaneth this? What meaneth this? Others, mm -hmm. mocking, mm -hmm. said, mm -hmm. these men are full of new wine. Right? But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice mm -hmm. and said unto them, mm. Ye, me, ye men of Judea, mm -hmm. and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, right. be this known unto you, mm -hmm. and hearken to my words. Right. For these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing right. it is but the third hour of the day. So it, it's, it's that time of the, of the killing of the lamb in the, in, the, in the evening, or in the morning, in the third hour, or ninth hour in the evening. So that time the Spirit came, and that people were... were imbued with the spirit of Lord and started speaking in tongues. But in verse 12 it says, someone was saying, they are full of new wine. You see, they just finished taking the wine. Right? That's what prompted them now in Acts chapter 2 there, go to verse 42. 42. Mm -hmm. And they continued steadfastly mm -hmm. in the apostles' doctrine. So you see now, it became a doctrine of taking the bread and wine. Let's, let's hear and fellowship, right. and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Now it became the apostles' doctrine, carried forward from Old Testament. Now at the third hour, and the ninth hour. Now read on, verse 46. And fear, mm -hmm. and fear came upon every 46. soul. Uh -huh. 46. 46. Mm -hmm. And they, mm -hmm. continually daily, mm -hmm. with one accord in the temple, and right. breaking bread from house to house, right. did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. So now it became a doctrine of the, of the apostles, the, taking bread and wine in the, in the houses, breaking bread. This is the bread. This is the bread that I say, God put that emblem of bread because it was a universal emblem it's found in every country now the, the disciples now started teaching all their converts to take the bread and wine at the third hour and the ninth hour where were they getting this from from exodus chapter 29 it's a continuation and the third hour is being called the morning sacrifice the ninth hour is the evening so verse 43 let's hear when they were taking the bread and wine mm -hmm. 43 yeah and fear came yeah. upon every soul. Right. And many wonders and right. signs were done by the apostles. When they were taking this bread and wine, what, what happened? People were scared. <laughs> Why? Because they are being empowered by God. You see, this doctrine that they had were empowering them. I can see people, they are scared. You see, what the, some, some were speaking when the bread and wine, 
the emblems were being taken and say, oh, they're, drink, they're drinking blood from people. They're drinking, but they've never even seen any, any person disappear. Was, where this blood is coming from, we don't know. But it is the bread and wine. And do not, be, do not fear, because that's the emblem which empowered the disciples. That's why they were miracles. You, you know, one of the miracles, let's hear. Go to Acts chapter 3. Mm -hmm. And see, that's why, because that is the time God had put in Exodus chapter 29. He said, in that time, I will visit you. And he visited the early Christians. On the third hour, he, the, the tongues of fire came. The Holy Spirit was received. At the third hour, Peter says, they are not drunken. It's the third hour. Now, let's hear uh, Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Now Peter See, and John. Miracle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now Peter and John right? went up together into the temple at mm -hmm. the hour of prayer, yeah. being the ninth hour. Right. And a certain man. So now it's being called now the hour of prayer. The ninth you hour. said the third hour and the ninth hour. It's called the hour of prayer by the disciples. Where is all this? This is the daily that the dark ages, Daniel chapter 8, verse 10, eradicated. And this is going to be brought back. Because all these are the religious laws and religious uh, feast festivals that the, the, de the, the devil threw the beast in the dark ages to, took off. Mm -hmm. So you and I have got to reform. Now let's hear what happened on the hour of prayer when they went. They had to go now to the tem their temple of the early Christian church. They made it a point that at the third hour or at the ninth hour it's open. Now why are these temples closed at the third and ninth hour? Except a few that I can see that are still holding on to the dark, to the to the uh, uh, mass in the morning and mass in the evening. But the rest, the temples are closed. But the early Christian church temples were open. Now, verse, verse 1, what does it say? Mm -hmm. And Peter and John mm -hmm. went up together mm -hmm. into the temple at the house of prayer. At the hours. Uh, sorry, at the hour of prayer. Right. Being the, the ninth hour. Right. And a certain man, lame from his mother's you womb. You see what happened on the, on the, on the ninth hour. Uh -huh. And a certain man, lame from his mother, mother's womb, right. was carried, mm -hmm. whom, the la whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, right. which is called beautiful. You see, this, this one who is a lame or a disabled one was at the, at the, every day they laid at the, at the gate of the temple. And what happened? Who's seeing Peter and John? Mm -hmm about to go into the temple, asked mm -hmm. an alms, mm -hmm. and Peter, fastening his eyes upon him, mm -hmm. with John said, mm -hmm. look on us. Right. And he gave heed unto them, expecting mm -hmm. to receive something of them. Right. Then Peter said, right. silver, silver and gold, and gold have I none, right. but such as I have, mm -hmm. give I thee. Right. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, up rise walk. up and walk. Did you see this miracle was performed what time? In the hour of prayer, which God said, I will visit you at that hour. This is the time to talk to him about your problems. This is the time he has to have miracles. That is the ninth hour of prayer, which is the evening sacrifice. We can talk about this daily, even from the Old Testament, even from Acts chapter 10, where you see um, this, this other. Let's go to it. Let's, uh, Acts chapter 10. 10. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This one. This, oh, okay. There was a certain man. Yeah, this one is not an Israelite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Adventure can say it was an Israelite doctrine. What is this name? Yeah. There was a certain man. Yeah. In Caesarea, mm -hmm. called Cornelius. Do you see Cornelius? A centurion right? of the band called the Italian band. So he's not an Israelite. No. And what happened to him? A devout man. Right. And one that feared God with all his house, mm -hmm. which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. So he's a pious man, isn't he? Uh -huh. He saw in a vision, right? evidently, about the ninth hour of the day, what an happened? angel of God coming in to him and this saying one unto him. This Israelite was visited at the ninth hour. And this is the very person when he was being visited. He is being prepared to accept the visit of Peter. Peter, Peter who, who, while he was sleeping, while he was hungry, had to dream of a dream of things that can be eaten and that cannot be eaten, which is the context, context of preaching the gospel to the non-Israelites, which are Gentiles. 
So God had to come to Peter in a dream to make him dream of things that, he, he, because he was hungry, and things that he can eat. But these things were things that are not, you know, supposed to be eaten, and some are eaten. So there is a combination. God was actually telling Peter that the gospel now should be extended even to the Gentiles who are not supposed to be God's people, but they are supposed to be involved. So he made it through the dream. And then at the same time, God is inspiring Cornelius when at the ninth hour, after that angel came, next was Peter now to come and preach to, to, to extend the gospel. Of which gospel? Of the, of the statues. The gospel of the feast. The gospel of keeping all the feasts and also breaking the bread from house to house, also to Cornelius' house. Did you see? This is what invites heaven when you start this gospel of the bread. Now let's let's see where then where then do we get that often often thing? Um, read from Acts chapter twenty, verse seven. Acts twenty. Mm -hmm. Seven. And upon the first day of the week, right. when the disciples came together to break bread, right. Paul preached mm -hmm. unto them, mm -hmm. ready to depart on the morrow, Do you see and this, continued his speech. This is speech. being done on the first day. Mm. The previous day was a Sabbath. Now it's a Sunday. They were breaking the bread. You see, they, they, they were breaking the bread from day, from house to house. They were break, Which bread is that? It's the daily now, this is what the brethren also confuse and say, we, we, we eat often the Lord's Supper, we eat often, and they misinterpret the daily with the Lord's Supper. The thing that is done as often is the daily. But the Lord's Supper is a debt. Let's see Paul. Paul is the one in verse 42. Repeat Acts 2, verse 42. He's the one who was instituting the daily, was teaching Cornelius, teaching everyone from day to day. This is the daily which is going on, being practiced by the early Christian church, teaching people to break bread every day as often. Now let's hear 42. And they continued steadfastly right. in the apostles' doctrine right. and fellowship mm -hmm. and in breaking of bread right. and in prayers. Right. So they continued in breaking bread. You see, on, on a Sunday, in Acts chapter 20, verse 7, they were breaking bread on a Sunday. They broke the bread also on, on, on Friday. They were breaking from house to house daily. They even visited, Peter even visited Cornelius, breaking bread from day to day, and this is the daily. This is no Lord's Supper. You can't be talking of Lord's Supper when you mean the daily communion. The daily which was taken off during dark ages is also involved with bread and wine, but you cannot misinterpret it as Lord's Supper. This is what he says we often. Now let's hear, let's hear him uh, in First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse twenty-three. Let's hear him talking about it. Mm -hmm. That's the same Paul teaching the daily. Then we will see him also teaching the Lord's Supper. So do not mix the two. We see our brethren now without even comprehending the difference between the daily and the Lord's Supper, mixing the two and say we are oftenly doing that. This is what the disciples often took the daily. Every day, from day to day, you go somewhere, you find there is mass in the morning, mass in the evening. Now in the Bible, there is the daily third hour and the daily at ninth hour. And this was called the doctrine of the apostles. Now let's hear. Mm -hmm. 11 verse 23. Right, verse 23. For I have received mm -hmm. of the Lord mm -hmm. that which also I delivered unto you, right. that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Right. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken so for see you. So now Paul is teaching what Christ took before he was, before he was arrested. This is now not the day. It was at evening. But the daily is taken every day, from day to day, from day to day, like it was with the disciples, even when they visited Paul, uh, uh, Cornelius, it was at the ninth hour, they took the bread. They, they, they were teaching as a doctrine. But when he now refers to the Lord's Supper, he starts by Christ taking the bread before he was arrested at evening. Did you hear now it's different? Don't mix what the, the Lord's Supper is at evening, 
with the daily, which is done during the day, third hour and ninth hour. Don't mix those two. I can see brethren saying we often, often, the often that Sister White refers was the daily. Now, and it was not clear to her. That's why she says silence is golden. So how clearer? It is clearer when the scroll is unrolled. Like it was when she was advocating uh, the eating of the pig. Next, she was now saying, take off even the, 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 the clean meat to vegetarian. So that's her utterance because the light continues to clear as time goes to the mark. Now here we are seeing Paul teaching the Lord's Supper now. We have seen it, Paul in, in, in Acts chapter 2 verse 42 with, with the disciples teaching the daily from house to house. But now we are seeing him referring to the Lord's Supper when Christ finished taking the Lord's Supper was arrested. It was an evening. Now repeat that verse. Mm -hmm. For I have received. For I have received of mm -hmm. the Lord right. that which also I delivered unto you. Mm -hmm. That the Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Right. So that's and, the Lord's Supper. It's not the daily. Mm -hmm. Now, let's hear. Mm -hmm. And when he had given thanks, mm -hmm. he broke it mm -hmm. and said, Take, Take. it. Mm -hmm. This is my body, right. which is broken for you. Mm -hmm. This do in remembrance of me. This was not for sin. No. We, we read in Patrick's and Prophets there, it says, such was the, the daily service which was done in case anyone has sinned, which was the daily. But the Lord's Supper was not for sin. It's taken for remembrance. Did you see? For celebrating death, the death of Christ. It's nothing for sin. But the daily was done, when we read it, it says it was done in case anyone has sinned. For all the sins that were still being brought to the sanctuary, this was to be done every day. And that's why we take the a third hour and ninth hour. But here when he was now taking the Lord's Supper and instituting the Lord's Supper when Christ instituted it, it was not for sin. It was in remembrance of his death. Did you hear the two things that are quite different? Now let's hear. Mm -hmm. And when he had given thanks, right? And when he had given thanks, mm -hmm. he break it right. and said, Take, Take it. it. Uh -huh. This is my body, which right. is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Right. After the same manner, right. also he took the cup. Uh -huh. when, he, when, when he had sup, supped, saying, mm -hmm. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Right. This do ye as oft. oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Right. So he also said, It is in the Remember. evening. And do you, and remember me, it is not for sin. Now, for, for as, for as. For as often as ye eat this bread and mm -hmm. drink this cup, mm -hmm. ye do shew the Lord's death till he come. Like what he did. Yeah. Right? So, he did that so that we remember his death. But do not confuse the Lord's Supper and the daily. You understand? So when you take the daily, we are taking every day, third hour, ninth hour. But the Lord's Supper, it was done by Christ at night, at evening. Do that to remember me. So when the often comes, the often is when that date comes, you take it. When that date comes, when it, you point to Sister White taking it in August or in whatever, but the prophet will not be given everything. It will further be disclosed as we get to the mark. Now let's hear um, uh, for another verse. Let's go to First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. So Paul is still talking about the Lord's Supper there. Uh -huh. 5, verse 7. Yeah, verse 7. Purge out therefore mm -hmm. the old living. Purge the old living. That right? he may be a new lump. Mm -hmm. As ye are unleavened, right. for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Right. Therefore, let us keep the feast. So Not which feast is, is he saying, let's keep the feast? The feast of the Passover. Where he has been explaining that Christ the past Passover has been uh, spread out, therefore the old living. That's where we find uh, unleavened bread. That he may be a new lamp first, 
as ye are unleavened. Because they were taking unleavened bread at that time. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with living, with all living, neither with living of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Right? Uh, this year from RH, November 5, 1895. Oh, what senseless excuses. Oh, what mm -hmm. senseless excuses mm -hmm. are made for, for refusing, refusing to accept the conditions upon which salvation is promised. Right? The excuses. So when you talk about this Lord's Supper, take it at the right on time. And the daily. Why? Why? Because if you don't have any daily, then that's why you want to compensate with taking the Lord's Supper in, in, you know, in several times. But when you have the daily, there is no need of taking the Lord's Supper four times. The daily, the bread and wine is there every day. But when you don't have that, then you want to compensate by bringing the, 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 the emblem which points to the death of Christ every day. I mean, four times a day. Why? Four times a year. Why? If you are taking the daily, you wouldn't have that, the need to do that. You only, when the Passover comes, at, at, even on the date of the 14th of the first month, remember the death of Christ. But openly take every day, the daily, as it was prescribed. Now here, all oh, what senseless excuses made for refusing to accept the conditions upon which salvation is promised. Now here, yeah, read on. Mm -hmm. The excuses mm -hmm. are varied. The excuses are varied. That man offer to God for refusing his invitation. What do, what do they offer as an excuse to, to refuse the, the clear-cut messages from the Bible? They are said, here it says, the, the quotation is R.H. Revere and Herald. November 5, 1895, paragraph 6, it says they are useless excuses. These are made for refusing to accept the conditions upon which salvation is promised. The excuses are varied. They are varied. Sometimes you find, oh, it was nailed to the cross. The same Lord's Supper is nailed to the cross. Uh, sometimes you find, oh, the ceremonial system is done away and the tithes are, t <laughs> are taken yet their ceremonial system. And people are washing the feet in that uh, day, in that 11 o'clock lunch, supper, or is it lunch, Lord's lunch or something? But they're still washing hands. Where are they taking those laws for? From the ceremonial system. So this is saying they are varied. The excuses, let's hear. Mm -hmm. The excuses, the excuses are varied, are varied mm -hmm. that men offer to God for refusing his invitation. Right? But they have no weight with God. They, all these excuses have no weight with God. The Lord has provided the feast at infinite expense. The feasts have been provided by God at infinite expense. Right? At a cost beyond all human computation. The cost is beyond whatever excuses you can say. Uh -huh. Now let's hear again on paragraph 6. There has, has not your reason. Has not your reason. Mm -hmm. Been convinced mm -hmm. that you should accept the gospel invitation. Right. Has not the Holy Spirit done its office work mm -hmm. upon your heart and convinced you of sin? Mm -hmm. And you have thought you would repent and ready when the messengers came to bid you to the wedding. Now, it's the, that's why we have a marriage feast. A marriage feast in the last day. Invitation is done and people make excuses varied excuses. One says I'm married. One says I've just started my job. One says, you know, all different excuses which are varied, which are given for not keeping the feast. Why, do, why don't you, why is, why is everyone not keeping new moon today? Why? Go and check these excuses in Luke. One said I was married. One says I've got, just bought two cows and I've got to train them. And one says I've, I, I, I've just bought a land. All the excuses, they rally under these three headings. Now, um, paragraph 6, the invitation has come. The invitation mm -hmm. to the gospel, is mm -hmm. that, is that the, one? Yeah. the invitation to the gospel feast is often rejected with apologies. But those, mm -hmm. but those 
who do this, but those who do this mm -hmm. show themselves to be the very actors whom the Lord saw and presented in his message while at the house of the Pharisee. Right. Mm -hmm. Every excuse mm -hmm. that is offered in a falsehood of Satan, a seduction by which he would draw the human mind from God. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, do we find the, 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 the early Christians keeping those feasts? Yes, mm -hmm. they are. So, how, where do you actually... That's why I say they are useless, they are senseless, because when you excuse and say they were nullified, and then you find all those who lived after the cross keeping them, how then do you meet the... The, the reasoning power of an ordinary man, a simple man who said, but if they were being kept by the disciples, when, when you actually say the cross has taken them off, where then do you stand? You know, as simple as things like that. Because when they were being practiced up until 22 October, how would you know it was a day of atonement when you were not practicing it? How, how would you know? Because now, right now, I'm telling you today is the first day of the second month. Only those who are keeping the feast, they know today starts the month of Zif or Ayah. But if you are no way keeping all those, how can you guess today is the first day of the second month in heaven? How can you? So how did our brethren in 1844 know that the 22nd of October was a day of atonement? How? When you claim that the feasts were nailed to the cross, the countings of these feasts were being recorded by heaven on things that had to do with our salvation, and you say they were nailed to the cross, and even Isaiah chapter 66, how then is it on verse 22 going to remove the, the, the nail which you say it was nailed at the cross and remove it in, in the new heaven and new earth? It's all the, that's why it says all the excuses are useless. Why? Because those same excuses. Now let's go to in, 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 in X 20 verse 6. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 20 verse 6. Yeah. And we sailed away from that's Philippi mm -hmm. after the days of unleavened bread. Do you see, the early Christians were still having the days of unleavened bread. And then it says, we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread. And what? And came, and unto, came them. unto them in Troas in mm -hmm. five days, right. where we abode seven days. Right. Now, go to STI, also the point three, the original supper. The original supper mm -hmm. was taken in a private house, an upper where the, chamber. Do you see, Spirit of Prophets tells us, tells us that the original supper mm -hmm. was taken in a private house, in upper chamber at night around around a table reclining this is on sti point three sti point three and let's let's hear and then we are, we are told you yeah, no no come let's take the lord's supper it's nine o'clock eleven o'clock twelve o'clock but the original lord's supper was taken at at night round in the house uh, Go to the STI 3. None of these conditions. None of these conditions mm -hmm. are maintained today by any Christian sect. None of the conditions of the Lord's Supper. That's what STI 3 says, point 3. None of these conditions are maintained today by, today by any Christian sect of taking the Lord's Supper at home, in your houses. None of these conditions this is the sop sti point three right but but start where it says none none of these none of these conditions mm -hmm. are maintained today by any christian sect mm -hmm. but it must be kept with the same spirit and purpose now as then it should be kept now as it was done then now we need it at night on the date as it was done in the house, it was done originally. This is what the Spirit of Prophecy says. Go to Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Also, uh -huh. day by day, day by from day. the first day unto the last day, right? he read in the book of the law of God, and mm -hmm. they kept the feast seven days. Mm -hmm. And on the eighth day, 
was a solemn assembly according unto the manner. Now let's hear what Sister White says about the daily. The daily we were talking. The bread is taken in the daily, ninth hour, third hour, and also once a, a year on the Passover, on the Lord's Supper. Now, what about this daily? As it is not heard anywhere throughout our regions. What does Sister White talk about? It? Let's hear um, in, 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 in PP, Patrick says, Prophet, page 353. As the priests, mm -hmm. morning and evening, entered the holy place right. at the time of incense, right. the daily sacrifice was ready to be offered upon the altar in the, out, in the court without. Right. This was a time of intense interest to the worshippers who assembled by the tabernacle mm -hmm. before entering into the presence of God mm -hmm. through the ministration of the priest. Mm -hmm. They were to engage in earnest searching of heart and mm -hmm. confession of sin. Right. They united in silent prayer mm -hmm. with their faces toward the holy place. Right. Thus, they, their yeah. petitions ascended with the cloud of incense, mm -hmm. while faith laid hold upon the merits of the promised Savior prefigured by the atoning sacrifice. Right. The hours... The hours mm -hmm. appointed for the morning, morning and, evening and evening sacrifice, sacrifice were regarded as sacred. Right. And they were and they were and they came to be observed as the set time for worship throughout the Jewish nation. Right. And when in later times the Jews were scattered as captives in distant lands. Mm -hmm. They still at the appointed hour turned their faces toward Jerusalem right. and offered up their petitions to the God of Israel. Right. In this custom, in this custom Christians have mm -hmm. an example Who for morning and then? evening prayer. Who are the Christians? Us. In this custom, Christians, yeah, read on. While God condemns... Now, a in this custom... In this custom... Mm -hmm. The Christians have an example for morning and evening prayer. Third hour and ninth hour, right? Mm -hmm. While God condemns a mere round of ceremonies mm -hmm. without the spirit of worship, right? he looks with great pleasure upon those who love him, bowing, bowing morning, morning and, and evening, evening. Mm -hmm. to seek pardon upon those who, have, who, have, who love him, mm -hmm. bowing morning and evening to seek pardon for sins committed and to present their request by needed blessings. Mm -hmm. So we, we can start more and more about the ceremonial system and about how it is uh, understood differently by laity and by leaders, how it is from the time it was being preached by the disciples to our time. It was not preached so easy. It was something that the devil was fighting thick and thin, using using those that the powers that be to fight the introduction of the of the risen savior. The cross was a the cross was a subject which the devil would attack. Attacked it from those who were preparing for the death of Christ and those who lived after the death of Christ. They are still being subjected to this system uh, where the devil will attack so that you do not stand still. But we are happy because at, at the end, the very elect will never be deceived. The very elect will keep the law of God as it is prescribed in the Bible. Clearly, as God wants it to be done, God has given us for us to overcome sin, and transgression. God wants us to be part of the people who are going to be saved by these emblems which he has freely given so that it, read for yourselves. Do not have someone as a think tank. Think for yourself when you read. Read and study and weigh evidences. Don't depend upon men because that will not save you. You are only saved by a thus said the Lord. Just be careful. It says, beware. Those who are not in the habit of weighing evidence, lean on men and take this man's decision and say, that's what is my decision. And God is watching all this. 
It happened to Luther. It happened to Christ. It happened to John. It happened to all that have been saved, uh, 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 that have been used by God to say uh, to send a message of warning to the people. The people went under the arms of those who were their think tanks. They thought these are things. How do you think Noah remained with only eight people? Eight people. Where were the rest? They went under the arms of the man. Say, sins he for men whose breath is in the nostrils. May God bless you.